Hello everyone. So after a couple of weeks of talking about the elements of art, we have actually made it to color. Okay, so this week we are going to be addressing an activity which will involve the use of color through means of pointillism. Okay, now after covering uh, George Sharat uh, during class, I think that we are ready to go ahead and give it a try, make our own version of a little pointillism project. So if you guys remember when we talked about Surratt in class and we saw his um, most beautiful Eiffel Tower, we did see that basically uh, the work was done by outlining the figure and then afterwards uh, all around it was just left with uh, pure color which was applied uh, with the use of different um, color dots. And basically that's the same thing that we see here. Uh, the only difference is that this work has been done with uh, crayons, okay? So this is the simplest form um, that you will be able to address this project, okay? So basically here what we see is an outline, okay? Which helps to find the figure or the subject, whatever you wanna make from it, okay? Um, it could be food, it could be fruits, it could be um, a fish, okay, um, a dinosaur, whatever you want to do with it, okay. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to outline it and then you're going to give it um, the inside with different colors. The outside of the figure, like I said, is just um, coming up with elements of color that work together and form a background. All right, so now if you say I want to use markers, I have um, a simple sample here of uh, work that was done by using markers. If we notice here, we're only using basically three colors. We have the blue for the background. We have the green for the tree and um, the bushes on the bottom. Uh, we have black to help us define the figure or the shapes and of course we have a little bit of red which it's just an indication that the um, that the tree has uh, flowers within it okay again the same concept you're going to do first your outline and then afterwards you're gonna fill it in with dots of color now if you want to be more daring and you feel like using paint if you have paint at home you could do exactly the same thing First thing you're gonna do is, like I always say, you do the necklace with the dots. You're going to basically define your shapes. And then afterwards, you're going to start filling in your shape with um, color. Now, when you apply this with paint, you're gonna need some cotton swabs, okay? So basically what you do is just pick up some paint and then you just do a couple. You come back, you reapply, and then you move on until the whole um, shape has been covered in. Now, this is simple, and um, I also have other illustrations to show you. These are more um, advanced, okay? Um, I'm pretty sure that the older kids, the fourth and the fifth graders can address it and make something that looks just like this. Um, I do understand that maybe the second and third graders might feel a little shy about it but if you want to go ahead and try something this um, daring I would say go ahead for it and I know that you will be able to do something like this okay so here we're using different colors in the background nothing has been left white except for the shine within the water right here okay so this is part of the design if you think about it it's not that it was just left blank because the artist got tired of my hand hurts and he just stopped doing it so also we see an integration here of different um, values of color okay and here we see also a um, mixture we could say of uh, browns and different greens right and um, I also have this example okay this one shows um, the elaboration of a plant form or a flower and it shows water okay 
and the sky in the background. Okay, so basically this would also make reference to George Sherrod's type of work because remember everything was, uh, a lot of the things that he did was from um, outdoors, nature, and of course here we see the water, the sky, and of course a plant. Okay, if you want to do something that looks like this, you notice how it starts off light. So I would start off first with the yellow and afterwards move on with the orange and then eventually just add on some of the red specifically on the top coming down all the way to until eventually you just break it up okay and also this part right here we notice this is the, sh uh, the sh it's showing us the shade on the water okay so it's showing us different blues and also the white act as a color and I have this last example it shows us a floral um, interpretation of um, something that had been done um, in the style of pointillism. We do see some color integration here. Also here, you know, different uh, colors of green. And of course, there's three colors of blue here along integrating along with the white, okay? Now, if you tell me, Mr. Z, I only have one blue, okay? If you have a dark blue per se, and you have white, you can always go ahead and use this one first, then afterwards bring it down to 50% by adding a little bit more white. And then that same white, if you if that same color, if you add more white to it, once you're done using it, you will have three tones of the same color by only providing, by only having one version of the color blue. Okay, so that is so that you can provide me with a diversity of color if you do have um, paint at home. Now, you are going to make the decision on what you're going to be doing and how difficult you are going to make this work. Okay, so if you feel up to it and you feel daring to do something very intricate, I'd say go for it. The more um, um, difficult the challenge, the more we grow uh, with time. Now, also, if you do not have paint at home, I understand some people might only have markers, some people might only have Crayolas, okay? All of it is welcome. Now, what I want to do right now is, before I let you go, show you a little bit of what you can do or how to address um, doing this, this task. So let's see, let's do some plant forms, okay? And I'm gonna start off with three leaves, right? And if you have a Crayola, first thing you're gonna do is, you're gonna give me what I call the color necklace, which is basically an outline. If you notice, it's just dots. So it kind of looks like, like a pearl necklace, okay? So, there you go. You define the shape. Right? If you want to give it line down the middle, you can go ahead and do that. <clears throat> and then afterwards, all you need to do is just give me an integration of different colors. Different, I should say different tones of the same color because if you notice um, This is still green. It's just a lighter shade and then if you want Maybe even some yellow Okay to enhance all those areas that were left um, White so now we can say that most of it has been covered and There's barely no white left so pretty simple, right? Now, if you're gonna do it with a marker, I suggest you to do it first with black, okay? And again, you're gonna give me the necklace, which is basically just an outline that is going to help you keep your shape together 
and then afterwards you're just going to integrate the color within the um, shape that you have just defined all right so there pretty simple right if you wanted to add yellow per se you can always do that and you can um, use different size of, of dots as if as you've noticed that I was um, applying right here okay so I have big ones and I have little ones um, so there that takes care of Crayola's markers so Crayola's are markers you would say basically um, coloring pencils would be the same concept now if you're going to be using um, paint you're gonna need a cotton swab okay this is what we use to clean our ears with and basically what you do is you pour some paint I always have a, a used plate okay so that I don't waste one every time that I paint and what you're gonna do is again you're going to define your necklace Okay, so this is going to look more or less like the result that you got when um, when I showed you those hearts that were full of color. Okay, so there you go. Integration of color by the use of dots. All right, so pretty simple, right? I'm pretty sure that all of you can do this. Now, if you are going to do something like this flowers okay again you can go ahead and use your cotton swabs all right and what you're gonna do is well, let me see where can I put it right here let's put it right here it's basically the same shape as the leaves okay and what I would do is you start off first okay you take a couple like four or five you dip them all together all right and you start applying them boom 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 okay so basically it became texture all right now you're gonna go back and if you notice, I have some white right next to that purple. I'm just going to go and mix it in. All right? And I come back. And there you have them. The beautiful little flowers. Okay? If you, let's say you want some darker shades in there, you just do one at a time. And that's it you know then you go ahead and you put your um, stem and you're done basically all you would have left to work on would be the background and like I said you can either do it uh, with one solid blue or you could do it with uh, variations of blues and um, you i'm pretty sure you will be able to achieve something that looks more or less like this all right so that covers the information on george surratt pointillism um here's some of the blue um i really hope that you guys enjoy making this project can't wait to see what you guys are going to come up with so have fun and let's see what we can do with this throughout the week. I'll be seeing you next week. Thank you so much.